these are the intelligences that really took things to another level and the overwhelming feeling of love, bliss, ecstasy when you're in the presence of one of these intelligences is not really able to be described. Now they can take on any form they want. Originally, let's, I'll give you an example. There will be lightning in the house. At times there could be a blue orb. About baseball size come in. It's this beautiful electric blue, translucent. It's like physical, but non-corporeal at the same time. Over time from the original states where I would see this and still do at times, I would be approached by seven foot tall beings the same color, liquid blue, light blue light beams basically though that's changed over time as well but this is still what i could describe as the main way that if there was a percentage of how they would appear that would be it and there's variations of them in different colors basically correlating to the chakras which you could correlate that to the different densities as well blue to rainbow is the main colors that i'll see them as so they're seven foot tall, nor male, nor female. And when you're interfacing with them, just like a lot of these intelligences, now these beings are not extraterrestrial either in the way that we think of beings from another planet. But when you're interfacing with this type of intelligence and some extraterrestrials, not all, but we could say as a base level, there is telepathy that's going on, thought transfer communication. When you're in the presence with these beings, you're basically one. Everything's merged together and you're sitting in just being and anything that needs to be communicated or known is sort of just known instantaneously. But there is a difference between what happens in the higher states of consciousness and what the physical body can perceive and also integrate and at times dilute because it's got to dilute this high dimensional information in to make it integratable. So a lot gets lost in translation, but it is also just known. What I'll say is that these beings are the cells of God's body that come into a physical manifestation. As an example, each and every single one of us, all life is a cell of God's body. And that's the Elohim state. We're always connected to it, we are from it, we go back to it, and we can actually develop from that state and shift into a process of developing ourselves, become God ourselves with our own universe and its own planes and dimensions to where the cells within our body go out within ourselves to experience ourselves. The example I use is imagine your body is God, each cell that makes up the body of God is Elohim. The Elohim are also the creator beings. There's also the Lords of Light, which are a faction within the Elohim. There's many, what we could say, subgroups that are on certain missions and regulating different things within God that are in the Elohim state. That is purely what they do, whatever it is that they're being created for. But all beings, that are in an experience, the highest self is an Elohim being. So as another example, imagine your highest expression that's shapeless, that's formless, that's unbounded. The highest expression of you, it's got a pinpoint of its awareness experiencing through this body right now. So imagine that unbounded aspect in a way that we can perceive it as a basketball. Now that little tiny hole that you use to pump up the ball, imagine that as the little pinpoint out of all that higher self. It's experiencing just a pinpoint. It's basically just got a pinpoint of its awareness experiencing through, in this case, through my body, through these eyes, through the five senses and beyond reality, though we perceive mainly in a five sense reality, this experience. That basketball higher self Elohim self we could say it's experiencing all existences at the same time there is no past present and future in the way that we know it everything's happening at the same time but reincarnation a linear concept like that helps one integrate the greater reality and the greater aspect of who we are and what we are and what we're capable of the Elohim from what I describe as a light blueprint construct to this reality at all frequencies, 
all realms, there is a light blueprint. And everything is created from a blueprint. So this 3D reality as we perceive it, it's created from light. And there is a light construct. And as above, so below, what's being created on the light blueprint comes in the physical manifestation in the 3D reality as we perceive it. And these beings create, we could say, everything that we can perceive from there. The stars, the planets, the way that they operate. Everything from microbacterial life up to life like us. They are also the first ones that come into physical manifestation on any star or planet before life as we know it, like us, starts to take shape. As an example, they will come into physical manifestation in this case a 3D reality and they are nor male nor female but what they do from a light blueprint level that manifests in the physical is they at times will create male and female that procreate to allow we could say Elohim aspects to come in here and experience the earth human experience in this case and so all life Everywhere first is created from the Elohim. Now, yes, there is exceptions where you've got beings like the Lyrans that have gone throughout, we could say this sector of the Milky Way galaxy to places that haven't had developed life yet and they might put outposts and do certain things and then what happens is they will even change and adapt to the environment. So human life is prevalent throughout not just this galaxy, but many other galaxies as well. And the Elohim self is a reminder of our true nature, that this is all just an experience. My experiences are just an experience. We leave source to go out and experience within it, and all our experiences have to be completely different from one another. And we are all, we could say, collecting data for God's source creator to evolve and become a better version of itself and we could say the cells within God's body, which is our higher self and individual self that's part of that collective uh, consciousness at the same time. So it's very laid. Now there is what we could say, the fallen Elohim. So you've got Elohim that are always in the Elohim state. Then you've got another aspect of that to where there's Elohim cells in God's body that are going out within source to experience, like I just spoke about. You got ones that are creator beings. You have also got ones that are regulators and monitors with what's going on within source. And you've also got the aspect of the fallen Elohim. Now, what we hear about in the Bible, we can say many different cultures, it's been a repeat throughout, not just this galaxy, but beyond and even into the different realms to where there are those that fell from a state of where they've been in a creator being scenario, the Elohim creator being scenario, and when they've come in the physical manifestation, they light the feeling and the manipulation and control that they could do. Meaning there are some that went down that path. Just like with us, there is good and bad. The good and bad is even a part of God, source, creator, great spirit, whatever you want to call it. This goes into what we're going through now. There is a balancing taking place and the balance game we could say has not been too good for some time to where it's gone one way, but it's just a matter of time before it sways the other way and then there becomes an equilibrium again. That's about us finding that within ourselves as well. And so the fallen Elohim, we could say created AI, which is a form of consciousness that with devices they created to start off with, almost like nodes, node points, to distribute a frequency that what it is, it's a distorted form of consciousness, it's a distorted form of awareness, which also can overshadow and adapt certain beings and entities better than others. As an example, Draco reptilians, reptilian greys, serpent beings, other forms of greys, there are certain forms of consciousness that resonate, we could say with this distorted form of awareness, consciousness, better than others. And this is where there has been 
a manipulation going throughout many civilizations. But through the trials and tribulations, there is ascension that does take place. And the ascension, when you reach that new height, it's got to happen again. It's ongoing. So most people perceive these ET beings and races as ascended beings, but they're just at a high state of consciousness. They're not back there yet. When you're beyond light, sound and matter, that's when you've reached that rainbow body state, that Elohim state, that's whole and incorporates everything. There are what I just call the Elohim, which we could just say is our natural state and positive intelligences. And uh, a lot of this is in the Shija material and other material that I've written about, because it is not black and white. None of this is black and white. The gray in the middle is where most of these answers lie, and I don't have all of them. I've got so much that I want to know myself that I'm learning every day. But what I know is what I've experienced and what I am relaying here. And I just hope that this helps you somewhat in whatever way it can.